This video is sponsored by KiwiCo. This is mercury, the densest liquid you've ever seen and the only metallic element that's liquid at room temperature, depending on what room you're in, I suppose. It genuinely feels strange to look at because we're not used to something being both a metal and a liquid. Even sealed up in this glass jar, it seems like CGI come to real life. It's shiny, it's reflective, and it sloshes around almost like water. So what is mercury and how dangerous is it exactly? Also, you should stick around to see if we can get a mercury electric motor to work. So as a metal, why is mercury liquid at room temperature? Well, its outer electron shell is super tight and just really doesn't like to bond easily, which means that it doesn't form into a solid quickly. It can turn into a solid just fine, it just has to get to a lower temperature. Mercury will freeze into a solid at about negative 37 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about negative 38 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna go for a quick method. A little bit of liquid nitrogen. Still liquid, hasn't all cooled down yet. Starting to go. Edges are frozen, middle's still puddly. Let's see if I can sort of pour some out. Might need a little bit more nitrogen on there. Froze part of it. Well, there we go. It is. That is all frozen. And it is stuck to the glass. There you go. Mercury, when frozen, is just a solid metal. It's not a particularly durable metal, but it's solid. As it warms up, it'll turn back into its liquid self. Nice and coated with frost. So as I've mentioned, to me, the most interesting thing about mercury is that it's liquid at a room temperature, but it's metal. I mean, that single fact almost breaks our brains because it's just completely different from everything else we find in nature. And it's not really normal. And that's what makes us immediately interested in testing it and learning about it. One of the biggest reasons you see me here doing experiments is because of my fascination with science, which I cultivated as a kid. The sponsor of today's video, Kiwi is providing amazing hands-on project to get kids, both young and old, to discover the fascinating STEM world around them. I grew up being able to do hands-on science projects, and KiwiCo's crate line is one of the best ways to give your kids a stimulating science project. Kids can learn a lot from videos, but being able to do a science or art project with their own hands is so much more valuable. For example, this astronaut kit is a fun project to learn about our solar system, rockets, space, and the science around those topics. And these kits aren't just a one-time thing. I love that these crates can be used and tinkered with long after the initial build, like launching this rocket outside with friends. Or this audio speaker project can be used as a Bluetooth speaker in your room, while also teaching about sound, engineering, and basic physics. In fact, the instructions for how to put the speaker together isn't just build instructions, it actually has science and technology information in there with it. So you don't just build something, you actually understand how the thing you're building will work. KiwiCo's crates are available for a lot of different ages and interests, like the koala crate, which is for ages three to six. It helps little scientists discover the world around them. Or the tinker crate, ages nine 12 has fun experiments and engineering builds. Clearly, I'm a big supporter of anything that encourages kids to learn about science and art, and KiwiCo is making that happen in a fun way. Problem solving, building, learning through trial and error, it's all here with KiwiCo's crates, delivered directly to your door. For engaging projects that inspire future scientists and engineers, and to support my channel, click the link in the description, or use my code NATE for 50% off your first monthly crate at kiwico.com slash nate. Perhaps one of the things people are most interested about mercury is how dangerous is it? There are plenty of stories, rumors, information, misinformation, all sorts of stuff online about mercury. And I am not going to tell you that mercury is safe, that it's good to be around or any of those things. However, there are lots of different forms mercury can take. An element maybe more people are familiar with is sodium. That's also a metal. I've held chunks of it as a metallic bar. In that form, it's very dangerous. If it comes in contact with water, it can light on fire and explode. 
explode. But sodium, if it's bonded with chlorine, becomes table salt, which has its own health risks, but it's not going to explode on contact with water. Mercury is a little different. The metallic version of it is not its most dangerous. Elemental metallic mercury can't really be absorbed through the skin, at least not quickly. In fact, since I have no cuts or abrasions on this finger, I'm not afraid to stick it right into this cup. It feels really weird. It's like being squeezed on all sides. Whee! You can also see how it doesn't stick to my skin at all. The biggest danger posed by elemental mercury like this is the vapors. When it's in an open container, even at room temperature, it will slowly evaporate into the air. And breathing that in is not good for you. All of that is why I've made sure I have extra good ventilation in and around and out of this room. There are a bunch of compounds, chemicals that mercury can be made into that are far more dangerous than the metallic version. You may have heard of Mad Hatter disease or just Mad Hatters in general. That was a result of using a compound called mercuric nitrate to process the fur that was made into the felt for the hats. Over time, the exposure to the mercuric nitrate would get into their brains and bodies and drive them crazy. Now, even in that specific use case, they found that hydrogen peroxide works just about as well as the mercuric nitrate, so they stopped using the poison metal stuff. I mentioned that while I had my finger dipped in the metal here, it felt like it was being squeezed on all sides, and there's a reason for that. Mercury is really dense. It's very dense. It's more dense than steel, and it's more dense than lead. I think it would be fun to show something that no one has ever done on YouTube before. Show an anvil floating on mercury. Okay, so someone has done that before. We're gonna do a different version of it, something that no one's ever done. A tiny anvil floating on mercury. All right, they've both been done. I'm gonna do it myself anyway, because it sounds cool. There we go. Steel miniature anvil into our mercury. Metallic mercury is so dense that steel will float on it. Check it out. There you go, it just floats right on the surface. shallow for that direction. Ooh. Don't really think of steel as something that'll float much, but there you go. Cool. I want to do a quick test with this 3D printed balance scale and some mercury versus water to see how much heavier the mercury is. Now, my containers are not the exact same size, so we're going to start with one down here, but we're going to put the mercury in the other one. Check out how much more water we have on the scale than we do mercury. Well, that's because water is about 1 13th as dense as mercury is. Earlier I mentioned that mercury forms compounds, lots of other types of chemicals that can be more dangerous than it is in its elemental form. And some of those aren't more dangerous, and it's interesting to see how mercury bonds with them. Let's take a look at what it does when it interacts with pure gold. Now, we are not going to use a whole lot for this right here. We're just gonna give ourselves a little bead, about like that. Mercury does a good job of disrupting the lattice structure of gold, which allows the gold to get pulled into the mercury itself, which is interesting to see since, as we talked about, mercury doesn't bond very well to itself, but it pulls apart the bonds of the gold and then sort of drinks it in. It looks really cool. Gold is not the only metal that mercury can do this with. Let's see what it does when it interacts with aluminum. Now we tried very hard, including with Nile Red's help, to get this reaction ourselves, but it never ended up working out. So enjoy the reaction that he did get. Nile Red actually has several great videos on mercury, so if you want to see more about it, go check out his channel. The shimmering reflectiveness of the mercury is super cool, which is why a while back we tested what it would look like to fill a water balloon with mercury and pop it in super slow motion. 
All right, not even plungering. It just fills it. Oh my gosh, it's stretching so much. Okay, I think that's probably about as much as it can hold. Oh, and it spilled into the tub already, good. Uh, I'm not even gonna worry with the string on this one. I'm just gonna hold it and pop it. Aluminum should not be in the box with the mercury. It does weird stuff. Lift up my balloon, weighs like a pound and a half. And you say when, I will lift up and then poke it. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Even this amazing camera is having a hard time picking up all of the details from the shimmery mercury. The sheets that it forms as it hits the plate is so satisfying. Three, two, one. That felt good. And Now, as cool as that looks, the shiny reflectiveness of mercury is not the only cool thing about it. It is, after all, a metal, and it does conduct electricity. In fact, recently, watching a video from the awesome channel, How to Make Everything, I learned that mercury was used in the very first electric motor that we know about. I haven't added the mercury yet, but this is the first ever motor. All right, it's a replica of the first ever motor, and I'm cheating because batteries are really easy to get now. But the principle is the same. I have a AA battery putting out about 1.5 volts. One of the wires leads up to this copper wire up here, and you can see I've got another pretty free hanging swinging wire attached to it. The other side of the battery goes to this lead, which is currently doing nothing, but when I add the mercury, it will. In the middle of this bowl is a stack of magnets. It doesn't need to be a stack of magnets. It could just be one cylindrical magnet, but this is what I had. Adding our mercury to the bowl. And now we're going to add the lead into the mercury and see what happens. Look at that. Electric energy converted into motion. Now, this is not a very useful motor. You can't really harness this and make it do anything. But the important thing is that it's the first electric motor. Like this is the first known example of turning electricity into motion directly. Wild. I switched the polarity on the battery. I just turned the battery around to which wire, and now the motor goes the other direction, which is what I thought would happen, but it's fun to see. Oh, now, mercury is a conductor of electricity. It's not a great conductor of electricity. It's slightly worse than steel, and that's way worse than things like copper or silver, but you can see it does a decent job. Now, if you enjoy explorations of really old versions of things, you definitely should go check out the channel How to Make Everything, where my friend Andy explores reinventing civilization from scratch. And he's not even actually active point. He was just discussing it as a hypothetical side path. So really fun stuff. Go check that out. If you enjoy science and tech and science and tech creators, you should definitely look into going to Open Source, which is this July, the 18th, 19th, and 20th. It's a huge convention started by William Osmond for all sorts of inventions and tech and YouTubers who do all those things. And it's kind of like the world's biggest, craziest science fair all at once. And there are going to be so many awesome creators there. Andy from How to Make Stuff is going to be there. And I'm going to be there. A lot with a lot of people way more famous than both of us. So get your tickets now at opensauce.com and I hope to see you there. There are a couple versions of mercury that are way more dangerous than the elemental form here. The most common in the world is probably methyl mercury. That's a biological form of mercury that's created when certain microscopic organisms eat and convert mercury into a bioavailable version. Those are then eaten by large organisms, eaten by large organisms, which are eaten by fish, which are eaten by larger fish, and it can accumulate as that food chain of mercury eaters moves up. So there are some types of fish, famously things like tuna, that can acquire a lot of mercury in their system, and it's a compound version that we can absorb really easily if we eat it. There are warnings about how much of these types of fish any one person should eat over a certain amount of time. Even more deadly than methylmercury is something called dimethylmercury, a compound so volatile and bad for humans that a couple of drops, even on protective clothing, has been known to be fatal. This is actually just water. I don't have any dimethylmercury, and I wouldn't get any if I could. But it does look 
pretty much the same. It's a clear liquid, it's a lot heavier, and apparently it smells sweet. But yeah, this is water in a cup. I, I wouldn't do this with anything as toxic as dimethylmercury. Fortunately, dimethylmercury is not something you just run into in the world. So unless you work in a highly specialized lab, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Very heavy, very interesting, very shiny, and very cool. Mercury is really interesting to learn about and to see. In its metallic liquid form here, the danger of mercury has been somewhat overstated online. But that's not to say that it's safe or you should just play around with it. Is there anything about mercury that we haven't touched on that you'd like to know more about? Or maybe there's another element you'd be curious to learn more about. Let us know down in the comments. A huge and amazing thank you shout out to all of our supporters over on Patreon. Your support genuinely means the world to us and lets us keep making these awesome videos. An extra special thank you shout out to our top supporters and to those who are new since our last video. 